The Elementals of Harmony by Fanimals Everything. Chapter 13 Three Joint Forces. Taxi! Dizzy entered the boutique's foyer and moved to the moping showmare side. You are king? The unicorn sighed. <sighs> okay, I have been okay since I tried to single hoofily take down a rogue constellation. She smiled reluctantly. But I admit, I'm doing better. You only got to see me in the world? Tracy laughed at the sincerity. <laughs> I don't know if I'm out to see myself. She looked at the Pegasus with a strange blend of wonder, confusion, and loathing. Why are you even bothering with me? I must seem like another has been below heart to you. Anything but. Did she know to the other mare's simple? We fit in each other's heads. You can't just dismiss that kind of connection. Besides, she realized where her thoughts were leading her and stopped voicing them. The abrupt halt didn't escape the performer's notice. Besides, the blonde simply avoided eye contact. Nothing. It slipped the tongue. No pony got magic oriented cutie mark without a degree of curiosity that at least borders on the unhealthy. Oh, come on! It's hardly fair if I'm the only one airing out her dirty laundry. Dizzy absolutely scratched at the four fours. Well, it's just that you kind of remind me of Dinky's father. Oh. The gray haired cheeks wax rosy. Don't like that! I mean, you're a lovely mirror, but I. Tracy circled barely restrained laughter. <laughs> Ah, no ponies call you a filly fuller, did see. Oh, what was he like? The plus fee is the Pegasus turn was full. Proud, driven, stubborn as any two mules he cared to name. The editor adopted a similarly distant look. Purple unicorn, cool question mark and a postmark cutie mark. He, how did you... As you said, we've been in each other's heads. He featured rather prominently in those few bits that weren't about liars and cheats. A chill played down Dizzy's spine. So, you saw... A nod. I'm sorry. It sounds terribly inadequate, but I am. I... I've come to terms with it. A long ago. Countless hours spent before mirrors helped to so far identify the sayings of unrestrained grief. But you still miss him. This guy stiffly nodded in response. Would you like a hug? Another nod. Thus, when Luna entered the shop, she saw her two lieutenants in a tearful embrace. I do hope I'm not interrupting anything. The police will apart. Your Highness! Tracy half straight. How long have you been there? I just came in. As close as the managers gave a sigh of relief, the princess's gaze turned to the doorway that led to the kitchen. How about you, Dinky? As Samara sensed anew, the filly, so dude, moved to the view. I was here the whole time. Sorry, Mommy. Sorry, Miss Trixie. Here, a unicorn coughed in a belated attempt to affect nonchalance. No, I'm done. <laughs> right, Ditsy. The other mayor nodded in agreement. You didn't do anything wrong, Muffin. Then, Lewis said strongly, if we're all clear of guilt and awkwardness, there's another elemental to stop. Where? cried Trixie. The night princess began to answer, but then stumbled upon an unpleasant obstacle. I don't know. Piggy Pie detected it somehow, as he never gave some specifics. <sighs> I found it. Dizzy's eyes were faintly aglow with blue light. And how do you know? asked the alicorn, suddenly wondering the peculiarly perspective of powers of polyvillians. I need probes to find each of the elementals shortly after you brought us here. In fact, a moment's thought, and one of the blue and gold spears stood to the view. It's summer and turned it while had a wide grin. There you are. Where were you during the whole sausage situation? The magical orb refocused on her, bobbed up and down as if to ask. And what would I have done? Point, Dizzy could see it. In any case, I checked with the others, and one has found something that's suspicious. Pinky's creature is near it, so that supports the theory. The princess and student looked at one another, then at the Pegasus, as one they repeated, Pinky's creature? Yeah, apparently she's also a spellcaster. The place walker wing shrugged. Luna disbelievingly shook her head. At this rate, my sister's economy is going to be accused of unfair discrimination. Still, but it's neither here nor there. We must make case. Did he do? Lead the way. Of course, Your Majesty. Go without me, said Trixie. The male mayor was incredulous. What? Why? It's simple, reasoned the performer. The two of you can fly. 
and if you and this pinky pony can't prevail against this thing, then I don't see how I can help. If you go by air, you'll get there much faster if you had to compensate for me. But what will you do? Luna inquired. I'll keep an eye on Twilight Sparkle. Trixie held up a hold to hold off any of the objections. This isn't about rivalry. Celestia herself said that magic would form the most dangerous elemental. If we had some point keeping an eye on it, we won't be taken by surprise when it finally shows itself. Princess of the Night considered this for a moment. Can you keep us abreast of any developments? The blue unicorn nodded. Speedy service instantaneous notification. Very well then. Her mentors expressed herself to a bit. Good luck! Trixie gave the biggest mo sincere smile Dizzy had ever seen on her. Thank you, princess. She galloped off. Luna returned her gaze to the pigasus. Solly! Greymare nodded. Right! She turned to Dinky. Please, nothing. Stay here. Stay safe. With that, she took flight. The princess fled of her to fall suit, when she fell a tug at her rump. Turning, she saw that her tail was caught in some pony. Y'all stinky! The filly released the star stuff and gave the moon a deity a serious look. I need to come with you. Luna struggled to hold back a smile. She didn't want to paint a nice girl, but it was simply too precious. As the race had safely danced behind royal deity, she asked, And why is that? Because if I don't, you'll have to insult the heat over the universe twice in one thing. The unicorn was no longer worried about betraying affection towards the young unicorn. Naked Asajj, on the other half, was on full display. She knelt. Climb on, quickly, before your mother notices, and tell no pony how you convinced me. Once he had come to terms with his students, equine nature, and it was assured that she bore him none of her patron's ill will, James Berlin proved to be an excellent teacher, primarily because of direct mind to mind error Ison removes most of the professor's hurls. He had the added benefits of an inclusive reputation and an extremely competent assistant allowing you to spend a few weeks away from the leadership of the Infinite Consortium with none the wiser. The curriculum for that period was a crash course in most of blue magic, illusion, divination, air and war manipulation, and of course, psychomancy. At Divine Maze's insistence, he would only assume those disciplines. If you could type the basic principles and create something new, he explained at the beginning of the two lists, that your husband is more capable and versatile than someone who does blindly imitates others. Of course, it wasn't all smooth soaring. Telekinesis was by far the hardest technique for Dizzy to master, frustrating her until Jace offered to examine the problem firsthand. What do you mean? asked the Pegasus. You've had no trouble getting other, more complicated spells to work for you, the human noted. I suspect that the issue here is a metal block. The analyst is pulling into considering this. Well, I guess it's okay, but be careful. I don't want Tyler to write the storm in on my account. The mind man is grinned. I was still relieved that the Esprit's grudge against remained his alone. Plus me, not as do I. The mental scan showed that she had subconsciously filed telekinesis as unicorn magic, and therefore something she couldn't do. Jason actually laughed after explaining this. What? This is demanded Fleek's flush. The human collected himself. Sorry. It's just sort of adorably naive. Seeing this it improved the pony's mood, he continued, Ditsy. I've worked with a fairly considerable number of planeswalkers at this point, and I've found exactly one thing that they have in common. Do you know what that is? She tried to ice on the floor. How should I know? I'm too adorably naive. Jay sighed, rubbed the sample. Please, Ditsy, this is important. So tell me. A planeswalker has unparalleled magical capability. Any spell that you can find, you can learn. Any creature that you encounter, you can summon. Any device that you come across, Cross, you could recreate. The only thing stopping you are figuring out how and getting the mana needed once you do. Oh! The Pegasus came out of her snare as he understood. So, being a Pegasus doesn't matter? He nodded. Exactly. You think every human can use magic? What? The man's eyes were white with shock. You mean he can't? Her teacher shook his head, smiled, adorably naive. It is complete! Rarity emerged right up it, her latest masterpiece in tow. What is? The ivory unicorn lay her eyes to see exalted her accomplishment. Now she opened up to a curious dragon. She felt smoldering beginnings of a bless. I, I uh, did realize I had an audience. Realizing her utter and rarity's embarrassment. Spike! I must apologize for my deplorable behavior earlier. I wasn't in my right mind. 
He gave it to Swiss of Life. It's fine, Rarity. I don't mind. You don't mind that you're a magically bound gag and stuff in the closet? Heck no! Sprinkle just chops. That binding spell was like a big glowing rub of salt water to Effie. Really? Yes, I'll say. The sign struck herself. I'm sorry, darling. But this isn't the time to discuss your new file taste for magic. See her to the work. I need to take this to Titi too. And apparently the fate of a classy under hunts on it. Hermione's eyes wide. Well, I can see why. Just look at it. The necklace itself was finely wrought gold. A series of interconnected segments that were rather too long to be a proper chain. Dangling from this loop was a saying that, between material and form, seemed to foil to inspiring puns about gold leaf. And that saying was a clear, scintillating jewel to shape of a teardrop and the spice of thumb. Verity hung intensely. Five minutes since it. You could have mastered my surprise when I realized that the jewel was a gr now she'd be growing. But I was able to... Oh, I'm getting sidetracked again. She looked down the hallway. Where is Ditsy? A dragon shrugged. I haven't seen anybody else here. Oh dear, I suppose I have to go hunt her down, as it were. Spike grinned eagerly. I'll do it! Fashion here gave a melancholy smile. Spike, you're a sweetheart, really. The smile became forced. But you're also dreading. Huh? You are just in. The face of the most serious smile he could muster. My lady, I promise you, I will ensure that this treasure reaches its destination whole and uneaten. He popped out sits. I swear upon my honor as a carrier of Cantalot. Adorably charming as this display was, Verity still had her doubts. She hesitated for a moment as she composed a compromise. How about this? We go together. I would assume that you know where she went, correct? Yes! Uh, no. That is, yes! You're correct! It, no, I don't. Well, neither do I. Let's fight it together, Sally. <laughs> yeah! Spike didn't realize his face was locked in a massive grin. As such, he nodded instead. Why did it? I'll just go and get my shatter bags. As the unicorn wanted to do just that, of course it came to her. Spike! Mm hmm? How exactly did you get out of that closet? Well, there was the grin. I've got good news and bad news. The red began to settle around Rarity like an unwelcome stall. What's the good news? The young dragon pumped with pride. I haven't lost any of my accuracy or finesse with my fire breathing. The siren felt her features slide to a very familiar expression. It was one she thought of as, Sweetie Belle, what did you do? On um, the bad news. There's a flay at this question. Oh, that. You're going to need a new dollar for that closet. The two ponies attempted to gather their wits after the morbid sight of an impaled equinoid was interrupted by an anguish, increasingly high-pitched screen. Piggy pounced on the angel and began shaking him by the fine-covered little shoulders. What did you do? What did you do? The rabbit, as he had every sense of the word, gave her the flat, silent look that even the ponies understood that mean, Bits, please. Don't you take that token from me, mister! I demand! Pinky. First I spoke, no more loudly than usual. But the name cut through the honest rat like a damn stung steel sword through a very angry butter. All eyes turned to the Pegasus. She didn't even flinch. Enough. The party pony hesitated. But along with the strength, breath, and wings of the dragon, she also adopted his temperament. Enough! Enough! When my piggy sets came out of dormancy to tell me one of my subs was being attacked with holy magic, I assumed it was the kindest elemental, with you kind of crossfire. Instead, she was taken out by a bunny! I was out of my mind with worry over nothing, so I will tell you when I... ENOUGH! The pink mare reinforces your eraser with a stare that could scratch diamond. Or, at the very least, apologize for being so expensive. The enchanted earth pony met the gaze head on, and really regretted. Her knees buckled, raised and bloated. Her mind could not focus on anything beyond her own guilt and failure as a pony. She didn't even notice when her dragonic enhancement abruptly vanished in a cloud of rust-colored smoke. A sensation interrupted the guilt trip. With a start, Pinky realized that Fluttershy was hugging her. Sniffling, the hardy pony returned to the embrace as her expression returned to a smile. I'm sorry, Fluttershy. It's okay. I was just so worried. You, you were never in any danger. And all that emotion had to go somewhere, and Screwball was my friend, and everything's going to be fine, Pinky. Although, we are going to have to have to talk about so many abominations. Only if Twilight has to listen to it, too! The two chair led at this. 
As Fred stood, the puffy mayor turned to Screwball Slayer. Ezel, you're a lousy, rotten, no good teen killer! The Legomoth shrugged. He also didn't give a hump about the pink minion's opinion of him. And when a rabbit does it. Applejack cut through the warm fuzzies. Girls, this is sweet and all, but like you have for granted something. Piggy gasped the realization. <gasps> we still have to destroy the kindness elemental. First, I gave her own heart like guess. <gasps> De destroy? Why would anyone need to just do something so terrible? Because the end of this world, sir, explained Applejack. And the longer it stays, the more harm it does. So get to Piggy's side of wide nuts. I figured this be right up your alley. With all that talk about Bible license. But I never. You, you must. One look in their eyes, and the gentle mare wilted against her friend's resolve. So he trusted Applejack on most matters. Trying to change her mind was nearly impossible in any case. All right. I can't stop you. Ernest's mare spared a sympathetic look. I'm sorry, Flourisha. I know it sounds cruel, but sometimes there ain't nothing you could do but pull him out of their misery. Well, seeing your friends nod, Applejack joined Pinky. If it's scritch right, you see the giant glow warm. The farmhouse sighed. I should have known, Shaggy said as soon as he saw she was here. Only way we could do this quick and clean. Hmm. The big party tapped her chin. I just think, what's if I got in her before I even scratch it? Well, what will? Pinky grimaced. It'll take a while, and it won't be pretty, but by the time we're done, fires will be scarred for life, and the universe might have fallen apart in the meantime. By this point, both horror fins penetrating to pick his eyes disbelief. You... You're both talking about Eric? They're probably glancing at each other. I told you you weren't worried to lime him. But the blue faint mare shrugged and turned back to gentle friend. Where is I? I didn't even think such a thing. He wouldn't even think about doing harm. He doesn't have to. Sim simply existing is enough. All three turned. All three spoke. Get I? I was thinking, asked Pinky. I'm going. This prompted another synchronized head turn. Reactions, however, deviated from one another. Applejack was relieved, Pinkie Pie was excited, Dizzy was less than pleased, and Flutterstar's brain stopped. Pe, 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 pe. The freckled mare shook her head. Here we go again! Come on, Flutterstar, get out of your system! As Dizzy hugged her daughter by tail for a stern maternal lecture. Pink Mane probably prostrated herself before Dizzy's Dinky's ride. Luna smiled at her subject's antics, though she became rather uncertain once she noticed the sinking. But as I please, you may rise. She did, so she kept her head down. On the ends of the hearing, there was something she might be interpreted as, Thank you, Your high Highness. Pinky strike the uh, sinking policy. Come on, Flutters! Luna doesn't want you to be afraid of her, she wants you to be her friend! The princess nodded emphatically. I've had more than my fear of fear. Please, Father Sai. You have seen me from an eternity of solitude and insanity. Will you accept my thanks? My friendship? America could pay this was silent, but her mind raced. Her gaze started about desperately, finally settling upon the first thing that gave her a degree of confidence. Hazel Bunny. With a good heart and labor turned sigh, he lay on the acorn's back and nodded encouragingly. This settled the matter for her. Oh, okay. What as I hesitantly looked into Luna's eyes, hesitantly smiled, and offered her hope for a friendly shake. Hesitantly. Then there came a tremendous flash from behind the Pegasus, prompting a piercing beep, and take a standing takeoff. All three looked up. Luna gave her a smile. I'll get her. Maybe it'll help us see past the tiara. Oh, you're the only one who can fly, was there double jack. Think he took her head. Yes, did see. Yeah, there he is. No, the biggest is in question. Walking up behind the air ponies, he looked up as well. In any case, some pony really needs to find Fire Shy. Luna spread her wings. I believe the pro proper model expression is, I call dibs. With that, she took flight. Pinky looked to her fellow place walker. So, what was that big flash? Dinky hopped up after her mother, cheerfully singing the answer. I meet the monster! I meet the monster! What?! Both her ponies looked from mother to daughter. Dizzy grinned and ruffled a false mane. It's true, she did. She ruffled more aggressively. It spoke through Ted's sleeve. Of course, she completely disobeyed her mother in doing so. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Cried the young unicorn. On the edge of laughter, tears were possibly both. How did you do it? 
Dinky, still fights for triumph even after chastising Noogie. So proudly she proclaimed a secret to her conquest. Oh, yes. Applejack quirked an eyebrow. Bike burn? She did. Dinky looked skyward and frowned. I like to only have to tell this one time, but what is size primarily proving elusive? Dinky scored like she was performing the dance of the overfilled wire. Uh, tell me, tell me, tell me! I hate suspense! The great Pegasus gave her a flat look. This, from the pony, he refuses to elaborate on falling through time riff as a foal. Okay, fine. I'm a hypocrite. Now tell me! Dizzy smiles and to herself. Well, since you asked so nicely. Dizzy might have been angry with her daughter, but that didn't mean she wanted to embarrass her in front of royalty. As such, she dragged Dinky away from the others before lambasting her. What do you think you're doing here, young mare? But mommy, I... Don't you but mommy me think about sorrow, do? I've told you twice now to stay safe and to not to stop these things yourself. And what do I find you doing? The full kid her case to the ground admired. Going after the monsters myself. Mother of Prey Star. I just got you back, you naughty little muffin. Don't make me worry about losing you again. Dinky returned a hug. You never must see mommy. I knew what I was doing the whole time. The pigs is stiffened. What? She released her child and looked at her through sprouted arms. Dinky, please do your poor old mother a favor and explain. When the monster tried to get me, it messed up. I could think out, but nobody else could think in. They even noticed me when I was thinking with their brains. With what I knew with so many smarts to work with, I was able to figure out the best way to save everybody. The young unicorn grinned. I told you everything would be fine. Dizzy took this in with an unreadable expression, a royal of conflicting emotions leaving her face neutral territory. Finally, the stalemate broke with a chuckle. <laughs> I guess you did. Still, mommy can't help but worry. She gave her head a shake. In any case, you still haven't told me why you followed me specifically after I told you not to. Because I knew how to be this one too. The male pony raised an eyebrow. Oh, how? The fellow he shook her head. Don't think it's silly, it won't hurt me. Dizzy sighed. She almost immediately spied the giant glowworm and pointed at it. Well, it seems harmless enough. Why don't we go over and you can demonstrate? Really? The bubble fight may not. Really. But the second I think you're in danger, I'm pulling you out of there, and I'm not stopping until we're not on to carrots. Deal? Deal. You know, guys, with at least four members of the Luniverse team here, and... The Luna first uh, cast members seeming to be taking care of most of the action. What does a few, especially Luna, what does a few uh, twi t changes and turns? I could totally make this a Luna first fic and a Luna first episode, and no one would notice. Once they covered a short distance to the elemental, both dust took in the sheer immensity for a moment. Granted, the impact of his enormity was somewhat lessened by his dumpy grin. Once the moment of awe had passed, Dizzy bounced it towards the larval larvae with a florist. Whenever you're ready, Dinky gulped, to move a bit closer. Um, Mr. Monster? Dinky gulped and moved a bit closer. Um, Mr. Monster? Behemoth focused on her and gave a polite smile with the width of a market stall. Well, well, I'm just so wondering if it's okay with you. Would you please go away so the world doesn't break because you're how you're not supposed to be here? Pretty please with nothing's on top. The kind of elemental thought process were simplistic, bordering on infantile. However, one sailor pointing the request did not escape its notice. She said please. With a coup of ascent, the immense its war screwed its eyes shut, it put its cheeks on a concentration. Its ambient glow doubled and redoubled, intensifying until the ponies had to avert their eyes. Just as Dizzy was about to grab her daughter and head for the hills, it fanned in a dazzling a marvelous spectacle that sent Fluttershy racing for the stratosphere. Your pony suggested this information for a short while. Finally, Applejack, disability really drawl. That's all you had to do? Those ask it polite like? Dinky nodded enthusiastically. You seem nicer than the one in Miss Fairy's house. The farm hope gave a chuckle. <laughs> well, I guess if it worked on Fluttershy, it would work on her ailment. She looked up. Speaking of which, where has that phone gone off to? As if on cue, Luna descended with Fluttershy and her host. Unexpectedly for the hypothetical choreographer, they were not the only ones making landing. Dancing! Pinkie Pie wasted no time greeting the Tom Cole. 
Well, I haven't seen you all day. Of course, it's still morning, but you usually sleep through most of the morning. So getting to see you this early seems better because you're getting to see you. Oh, boy, you would not believe the day I've been having. I mean, for one, I'll never guess what woke me up this morning. Go on, guess! The poofy mate bounced on her hose for a moment before she realized her friend hadn't even expressed unwillingness. She leaned over. Hey, you okay? No, Piggy, I am not okay. Yeah, she certainly didn't look okay. She was soaked to sweat swaying on the first collapse. Her wings were still spread. She was as she folded them. This thing has been chasing me since before sunrise. I am freaking exhausted. Right now, I don't want to do anything but lie down and sleep for a week. And with that, she slumped to the ground, apparently intent on just that. Where are you roaming from? Apple Jack asked. There was a distant thunderclap. Play out of place on such a clear day. Rainbow Dash raised the hope to the heavens and simply said, That! The thunder lessened, but maintained a continuous rumble. A young voice could be disturbed against it, though its words could not. Flourish Shy looked up the sky anxiously. What, what, what is that? The voice became clearer, was sounding a peculiar bow cry. That! Under the ass, it's my fan club! The battle cry was as follows. Dash! We're going to love you! Brace yourselves, sighed the warned Pegasus. Skidoo is coming! You got a new card! Congratulations! Call from arms. Four colors mana, one white mana. Sorcery. Call from arms costs three less to cast and targets a white creature. Exile white creature, target creature. Peace works best if on the already gentle. 